So when we say test, don't guess, because we say that a lot, right? And we really do want to utilize uh, measurement markers to know what a person needs and don't need. Um, when it comes to melatonin, is there a quantifiable way to say that a person needs it or not? Or is it merely subjective? That's a great question. Um, and I get that question a lot. If you look at the curve of melatonin throughout a person's life, and again, we're talking pineal melatonin, we see that children have some of the highest levels of melatonin. So personally, I don't think children should be given supplemental melatonin unless they have a condition where they might benefit like ADHD or autistic spectrum disorder, there could be some indication there, but just for sleep hygiene, popping a, a bunch of melatonin gummies, I feel like maybe we just need to get sleep hygiene first and foremost, right? Like make sure they're off devices or bedroom is clean, you know, all of those different factors, but kids have a high amount of pineal melatonin. As they reach puberty, things start to change. They start to come down. By midlife, we have about a third of what we had as a child. And then in our 50s, we have about a tenth of what we had as a child. And it just continues to plummet. We, we pretty much bottom out. So the question becomes, well, gosh, what happens then to my mitochondria? Biohackers are really into supplemental melatonin because they seem to be keyed into this sweet spot of how do we patch the gap of what we've just lost? But listening to you talk about how or I mean, a tenth of what we had in younger years, that's pretty significant, especially knowing what it does to mitochondria. Yeah. So, exactly. but more is not always better, right? Not for day-to-day -day consumption.